The switching type a router uses determines exactly how individual packets are forwarded out of an interface. Since the switching type affects how packets are ultimately forwarded, we need to understand how each different switching type affects packet forwarding decisions. There are three switching types that we're concerned with. Cisco Express Forwarding, or CEPH, Fast Switching, and Process Switching. Let's start with CEPH, Cisco Express Forwarding. It's the default switching type. The information from the IP routing table feeds into Ceph's forwarding information base, or FIB, which contains the IP network prefix, the next top, and the outgoing interface. The information from the IP routing table is also used to build the adjacency table, which contains the Layer 3 protocol, the outgoing interface, and a pre-computed Layer 2 header. Now, you don't need to remember all that. We're going to look at this on the command line, but I'm trying to give you an idea here of how Ceph actually works when it comes to switching packets. Process switching simply uses the IP routing table for prefix lookups and doesn't cache anything. Each and every packet that comes into the router triggers a separate lookup of the IP routing table, so it's pretty inefficient. This causes the CPU utilization on the router to skyrocket and, of course, performance suffers. Fast switching, on the other hand, uses the IP routing table for the initial route lookups like process switching does, but it builds a cache, so subsequent lookups for the same IP prefix will use that cache. You can view these cache entries with the command show IP cache. If there's anything present in that output, then you know fast switching is enabled. Now in the end, regardless of the switching type, the switching process has two outputs. The physical interface the packet needs to be sent out of, and the next top address. When it's all said and done, that output is what determines the fate of a given packet. It's a big responsibility and one that doesn't get a lot of attention, so let's go to R5 and get a closer glimpse into the world of packet switching types. You can tell that Ceph is enabled by simply doing a show IP Ceph summary or in the case of IPv6, you would just change IP to IPv6. Now we see here that it says IPv4 Ceph is enabled and running, so clearly Ceph is enabled and running. Now let's do a show IP route, and we'll do 46, 46, 46, 46 here. Now notice that we have two routes to this particular prefix. Now to refresh your memory, EIGRP is doing equal cost load sharing for this particular prefix, but really EIGRP is not what does the load sharing. It's actually Ceph. EIGRP just delivers two routes into the IP routing table, and Ceph is actually the switching process that decides what it's going to do with those two routes. Now, what is Ceph going to do with these two routes? Well, let's do a show IP Ceph exact dash route and if I hit question mark here, it's asking me for the source address. So in this case, let's just say R5's loopback. And then another question mark, it asks for the destination. So 46, 46, 46, 46. And it gives us this output. It says 5.5.5.5 .5 .5 .5 to the 46 prefix is going to exit out of Ethernet 01. And the next top address is 10.056.6. All right, well, let's do this command again and see what happens. Remember, we're doing equal cost load sharing here. And look at that. It's the same thing. Now, this doesn't look like load sharing, does it? It looks like Ceph would actually switch this packet the exact same way every time. And in fact, that's exactly what it's going to do. But why? Well, let's do a show IP Ceph, and then we'll do the 46 prefix again, and I'm going to type detail here. Notice where it says per destination sharing. Now, believe it or not, this is actually the name of the load sharing algorithm Ceph uses to do load sharing by default. And it's actually based on a source destination pairing. This means that using our example, given the source address 5555 and the destination of 46, 46, 46, 46, Ceph is going to switch that packet out of the Ethernet 01 interface every single time. Now, to give you a better idea of how this might work in a real network, let's see how Ceph would treat a different source address. Let's do a show IP Ceph exact dash route, and let's do 5001 R5's other loopback as the source, and of course the same destination IP address. 
Interesting, this is gonna actually take the exact same path, Ethernet 01, and the same next hop, R6. All right, how about let's do 5002. Oh, look at this. Now this is gonna take Ethernet 00. Next hop is going to be R4's interface address. All right, let's check out how about 5003. Hmm, look at that. So you can see this is gonna actually take the same path, Ethernet 00 to R4. So if we kind of think about this, it's pretty clear that this load sharing that Ceph is supposed to be doing is, is not equal. It's not actually equal cost load sharing. It's just based on this hash of the source address and the destination address. So that's a little something to keep in mind when you're doing equal cost load sharing. Just remember, it's not necessarily going to be exactly equal when you're dealing with Ceph. But what about process switching? Well, process switching actually works a little bit differently. Let's go ahead and turn off Ceph. I'm just gonna go into configure T here and do a no IP Ceph to turn it off. And I can go ahead and verify this. And we can see that Ceph is disabled and not switching. It says, but not switching, but you know, it's the same thing, it's disabled. So we're going to be using process switching now. All right, now, Let's turn on some packet debugs and filter them using an access list. I'm just gonna do access list, we'll call this 99, permit 5555, and then debug IP packet 99. Now this is basically going to turn on packet IP packet debugs, but it's only going to show us anything that has 5555 as the source address. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that debug on, and I can't do that in configure T mode. So now that it's on, let's do a ping. We're going to ping this time, 46, 46, and so on with a source of 5555. And I only want to repeat this ping. Or I actually only want to ping two times. So hit enter here. Now we're going to get a little bit of noise on the screen here. But notice the first packet is forwarded out of the Ethernet 00 interface. The second packet is forwarded out of the Ethernet 01 interface. And in fact, if I go ahead and do this again, 00 and then 01, I could just keep doing this over and over and over again. And we're gonna keep getting the same results here because process switching is doing that individual lookup in the IP routing table each and every time. And it just goes back and forth between those two routes. So let's go ahead and turn Ceph back on because we really want to use Ceph, obviously. We don't want to kill our router here. So I'm just going to do IP Ceph to turn it back on. And now let's go talk about how we can perform path control with this new knowledge.